can we solve PDEs analytically just like we did with some ODEs? There is some good news and bad news. The bad news is that this is in general not possible and we need to resort to numerical solutions instead. The good news is that we can in fact find solutions for some large and important classes. Among the most important solution methods is the so-called separation of variables. In this video you will learn all about this idea and we will use it together with concepts we developed before to find an analytic solution of the heat equation. So, in our uh, separation of variables, first we do the first step where we don't care yet about the initial condition. So in the first step, we only care about the PDE and the boundary conditions. Initial condition will come later. So what do we do? First, we su suppose we find a U1 and a U2 that both satisfy the PDE and the boundary condition. Then any dinner combination of those two, u is c1, u1 plus c2, u2, also satisfies both the PDE and the boundary conditions. Well, how can you see that? Well, ut equals c1, u1, t plus c2, u2, t, u1 and u2 both satisfy the PDE. So for both of them you have alpha squared times u1 xx, and for the other one alpha squared times u2 xx, you can take the alpha squared out and you see that ut equals alpha squared times uxx. So if you have two uh, solutions, then a linear combination also satisfies the PDE, and for the boundary condition it is clear, because they are zero on uh, x equals zero and x equals l, so if you take a linear combination you're still at zero at the boundaries. So that's the first thing we need to observe. So, more general, if you have a number u and uh, of x of t satisfying both the PD and the boundary condition, then any linear combination of them also satisfies the PD and the boundary condition. Now we're going to look for a very spe spe special form of solutions u n. We are looking for u n of the form x of t, x of x times t of t. So we look of, for functions of x and t, not just any ones but functions which are a product of a function of only x times a function of only t. Such a function would be, for example, x squared times t cubed. Then you have a product of a function of only x times a function of only t, namely x squared and t cubed. Well, this is very special because if you take something else, like the sine of x plus t, for example, then you don't have this. You cannot write this as a product of a function of x times a product times a function of t. So this is actually a pretty say restrictive, a pretty special form, but let's try to find solutions which are exactly of this form. Now, uh, if you have a solution of this form, then you n differentiate with respect to t, you only need to differentiate the, the second part, because the first one part only depends on x, and if you compute derivative with respect to x, you only have to differentiate the first part, because the second part does depend on t and not on x. So you can plug that in the PDE, you get x times t differentiated with respect to t equals alpha squared times second derivative of x times t as a function of t. Then we divide by x times t, you get tt over t equals alpha squared xxx divided by x. And now very, something very important happens. This left hand side over here only depends on time. This right hand side here only depends on x and not on time. That is only possible if both the left hand side and the right hand side are in fact constant. So tt over t is constant and xxx over x is also constant. Well we have to give this constant a name and in this video we we could call it lambda but it's more convenient to, co to include the alpha squared in the constant and to include the minus sign. So we will call this constant minus alpha squared times lambda. Now if you use this, we end up with two ODEs, xxx equals minus lambda times x, and tt equals minus alpha squared times lambda times t. So we have converted our PDE into two ODEs. So that's much nicer because we have many solution methods for ODEs. First we uh, look at the uh, uh, boundary conditions and then the equation for x. On the boundary we had u of zero and u L comma t equals zero. So 
at x equals 0, we have x of 0, t of t, and that has to be equal to 0, which means that uh, x at 0 and x at l both have to be 0, because they have to be 0 for all times. And it's only possible if x of 0 and x of l are both 0. So now we end up with the so-called eigenvalue problem. Uh, we had an ODE, x, x, x equals minus lambda x, and we have two boundary uh, values, x of 0 equals 0 and x at l equals 0. We have seen before how to solve such an eigenvalue problem. We got eigenvalues np over l squared and eigenfunctions xn equals sinus n pi x over l. So this is something we have solved before. So there we have our functions x of x and there we have our lambdas. Now, once we have our lambdas, we can find t, uh, t as function of t because t t equals minus alpha squared lambda times uh, t, which gives us exponential functions uh, like this, where the lambda n's are already given over here. So now we have both x of x and t of t, so we can find our u n's. u n equals x of x times t of t, which is over here, and your total solution is some linear combination of the u n's over here. So now we have done the entire first part, where we uh, took care of our PDE, and we took care of our boundary conditions. We did not take care yet of our initial condition. And our initial condition is going to determine our Cn, our constant Cn. So what about the initial condition? At uh, time 0, ux equal comma 0 is some function f of x. Now if you plug in uh, t equals 0 over here, this exponential rubbish here drops out. You just get e to the power 0 equals 1. So we get this sum over here has to be equal to f of x. And now we see that we in fact want to express f of x in terms of sines. So we need the Fourier sine series of f of x. So what can we do? We use the odd extension of f of x to find the cn. So the odd extension has a Fourier sine series, where the b n are given by the familiar integral over here. Uh, then we know f is odd here, sine is odd here, so the integral of minus l to 0 and the integral from 0 to l are the same. So this is equals 2l times the integral from 0 to l of f odd times the sine. And between 0 and l, f odd and f are the same, so you can just use your f of x over here to compute your bn. Now, between 0 and l, f of x and f odd of x are the same, so f odd of x has the coefficients bn are given over here. Uh, so uh, in order to find this coefficient for f of x, the cn, we see that we can use exactly the same, the cn are the bn. So the cn which you need in your solution are the bn given by this integral where you only need f of x. So that is how you take care of your initial condition.